What is up guys, Doc in Progress here, coming at you from a different location today. I am home home currently because medical school is canceled, um, as would be expected from the current situation going on in the United States and the world. A really dire, uh, serious situation with coronavirus. Uh, my heart goes out to everyone affected and for all of you uh, really out there uh, suffering due to the consequences of it, which is basically everyone at the moment. Uh, I hope you're all social distancing right now, staying safe. Uh, and for those of you who are serving right now, whether as truck drivers, grocery workers, doctors, nurses, I sincerely thank you for my service. To my medical student colleagues who are fourth years graduating early to help those places that really need it, like New York City, thank you for everything you're doing. Um, I hope for all of you this really puts into perspective how incredible, uh, how it's really an incredible privilege to be a physician or uh, be becoming a physician or aspiring to become a physician. Um, uh, this job that really, you know, no matter what, uh, allows us to care for people in their times of needs, whether it just be, you know, regular everyday type stuff or worldwide pandemic type situations. Um, this whole pandemic, I, I've always been someone who's been very excited to learn uh, it's w one of the reasons I was pulled into medicine because it's really endless learning But really this has sparked a new Fire in me one that you know, I was kind of going through the cycle as we all do in medical school as we know we kind of just You know do what we got to do learn very uh, Rigorously what we're in so I was just in surgery So learning very rigorously what I was in and then kind of moving on to the next thing so on and so forth um, But I really like having this uh, opportunity, although unfortunate that it was because of this circumstance, that I now have time to really delve deeper into areas that I uh, I wanted to, you know, such as physiology, just really getting nitty gritty, learning just for my own desire, which is a beautiful thing, not having to learn for a test or, you know, we're always learning in medical school for to become a doctor, of course, that's the end goal, but really in the short term goals, it's always learning to take a shelf exam, to take step one, so on and so forth. So it's nice in this situation to have the opportunity to learn uh, something because I really desire to learn it. So for that right now, you know, respiratory physiology is that big thing right now. Uh, I love getting to delve deeper because, of course, respiratory block in medical school is not that long. Um, but now kind of looking into it, understanding it more, ventilator settings, uh, viruses, epidemiology, things of that nature, kind of delving more into that. Um, in terms of how medical s schools in the country are dealing with it, because that's kind of what you're here for as well to learn about, um, most medical schools, actually really all medical schools, have kind of shut down at the moment. Um, in terms of what we'll kind of go from, uh, you know, first years upward, uh, the first thing when the coronavirus hit was that first and second years were pulled from classes, similar to college students, because first and second year medical school students learn in the classroom. They don't necessarily have to be, um, you know, at... Uh, in the hospital or, or be put in any type of situation where they would be at increased risk of harm from this uh, They were pulled because you can do lectures online as a lot of medical schools already do uh, And that's what my medical school and most medical schools are doing They're moving to an online curriculum to teach their first and second year students So their lives are kind of going on um, as normal as they can be um, But then really where the situation turns more significant is um you know, the, end, the second year is coming out of second year right now, as well as third years at some schools, because some schools do um, clinicals before they take step one. And uh, uh, the significant part is that some people are getting their step one dates canceled. And I really feel for you guys. Uh, I'm so sorry that, you know, you're going through what I know is uh, an additional stressor on top of what is already some of the most stressful moments uh, of your medical school career thus far. And I know it's probably tempting to quit studying right now because so much is going on um, and the additional stress load on top of what you're already going through can really push you over the edge. Um, my hope for you though and my recommendation, because I keep getting asked this, is you should definitely continue to keep studying. Um, even if you don't know right now the fate of your test day because, you know, they've only given a tentative open by date, but that could certainly be extended. Um, 
but you guys gotta you study hard, keep studying, like like you're gonna take the test on the date that you signed up for because it very well it, it may very well may be that you take the test that day and you do not want to be underprepared for it. Um, do I think that they're going to push Prometric from opening beyond the point that they've said right now? My answer is yes to you. Does that mean you should stop studying? No, you you should continue studying because the studying, although. Uh, you may not take the test on the date that you like. It will pay off that you studied this hard um, right now so that when you do take the test, uh, you'll have the knowledge and you'll have the ability to take the test at your you know peak level. Um, I certainly understand that the uncertainty is probably playing into the, the efficacy of your studying. Um, you probably are not studying tremendously well right now due to the additional stressor um, but do the best you can because that's all that we can hope for right now and I know it kind of seems hopeless um, but you know try to keep a positive attitude while you study think of it as you know this is truly a moment where you can just go into your cave and study and not feel like you're missing out on anything because the whole world is kind of paused with you and that normally doesn't happen um, so just kind of focus on that and, and do the best you can to study. Um, for third years, I'm a third year, our rotations got canceled and, uh, you know, we don't know what that's going to look like when we apply to ERAS because right now, yeah, we can take online components of certain um, rotations, but uh, I don't really know any medical school that are offering rotations fully online and if they are, um, I know they're not in the top 10 medical schools because the top 10 medical schools aren't offering that because they decided that core rotations cannot be made up for with something online. You just don't get the proper experience. And I would have to agree with that. I think if your school is offering you uh, a rotation completely online, they're kind of jipping you and you're missing out because these rotations are really what we come to medical school for. The first and second year are building foundations. Third year is when you learn to become a doctor. And uh, you need to be in the hospital for that. You need to be interacting. Now, of course, I know very well that when we prepare for shells, nothing we do on rotation prepares us for a shell. We have to do our own self-studying. Um, but I do think there's a component, even, you know, we take our shelf because we want to get the honors and all that, but being in the hospital, working with doctors, understanding why they do certain things, why they order certain tests, that comes from being in the hospital. That's what locks in the knowledge. Seeing a patient, you know, with, with Wagner's for the first time, that locks in things way better than you studying for an exam. And so, um, you know, but my fear with all of this is we don't know how many rotations are going to get pushed back. Some of us have two, three rotations left, uh, really important core rotations. Um, but the one saving grace of all this is that we're all going through it. Um, we're all kind of screwed right now in terms of that. And so the whole system is going to have to change around us in order for us to graduate on time. And honestly, like, I know no one will give us a straight answer of, will you graduate on time, blah, blah. But do not for a second doubt that that we're going to graduate on time. That's my opinion. The medical system is run by residents. Hospitals collapse without residents. Do you think they're going to delay an entire residency class while graduating an entire while graduating an entire residency class? That means they're losing their doctors and not gaining any. Hospitals aren't built to do that, especially not teaching hospitals. There are certain hospitals that could certainly run without residents one being the Mayo Clinic probably, but um, most hospitals in the United States are not equipped to run without residents. So my suspicion is that we'll graduate on time, but schools, the LCME, NBME are all going to have to adapt and be versatile, which they normally are not, in order to graduate us on time and to work with us. I think this is really gonna be a team effort on our part and on their part, that we are taking every opportunity we have during this break in time to learn and do things that are important for our education so that when they cut things out in the future, in fourth year and so on and so forth, that we are not lowering our standard of doctor, that we are graduating with the same knowledge we would have if, we, if nothing had happened and we hadn't been going through all of this. And that's our responsibility. So, you know, we don't wanna graduate as, you know, half tier doctors. You need to take your education into your own hands at this point um, because really we have nothing else that we can do. We can't control anything else right now. We have no idea what the away rotation is going to look like. ERAS, is ERAS going to be postponed? 
We have no idea right now. Step two CK, step two CS, all of these things are out of our control. The only thing in our control is our ability to self-educate. And I beg all of you to use this opportunity, this brief moment in time where we are not busy to learn things, to make yourself a better physician. Um, in terms of fourth years, you guys are out of here. Um, you know, you met all your requirements. Some of you are graduating early to help out. And like I said, thank you so much. Like that's incredible. That is truly, I, you guys are heroes. Uh, you know, you, all of you had to miss match day, had to miss graduation. And um, I really feel for you on that. I know firsthand how much we have to work to get to that point, to graduate, to become a physician. Uh, match day is such an important day um, because it's really the last time you are able to kind of celebrate with your entire class. You are at graduation too, but um, match I feel is more significant because that's when you really realize, hey, I've got my residency spot, I'm becoming a doctor and this is where I'm going. Um, and I, you know, I am so sad that you guys had to miss that uh, once in a lifetime experience, but uh, your flexibility in this situation and you, your ability to celebrate even without having uh, a true, uh, you know, gathering, it, it's incredible. I think you guys have made the most out of, uh, of, of all of the situation and, um, you know, it makes me kind of emotional just thinking about it. Like, uh, I just, I know how important those, you know, graduation and match it are. And I know losing those can really take a toll because um, you guys deserve a celebration. Um, but really, I, I think you guys have done incredible, you know, doing your virtual matches and finding a way to celebrate even while social distancing. And um, you really have been great examples uh, for us that are coming after you and following in your footsteps. So thank you. Uh, so I've decided during this brief intro, uh, you know, I want to give back. Uh, any way I can and I have time now uh, and I love helping you guys and I love helping you know medical students uh, reach their goals and um, I am someone who loves educating that's why I'm definitely going to be going into academics uh, that's one of my passions I was an MCAT teacher uh, I'm a tutor at my school I you know teach step one type stuff um, surgical skills uh, things like that and I love it and I want to do that for you guys so during this time while I have time uh, I want you guys in the comments to ask any step one questions you might have any things you might be confused about in the didactic years of medical school year one year two um, you know whether that be vitamin D uh, the vitamin D pathway if that's confusing you or respiratory physiology let's say um, anything really that are anything that's taught during the first two years of medical school that's on step one that you're confused about right now I want to make a series of videos that uh, basically talks about those explains them as best as I can uh, and hopefully clarify things for you to hopefully decrease your stress load right now and have someone that's uh, got your back in terms of really spending time explaining certain things so yeah please leave a comment let me know if you have any questions um, you know, every medical student should be supporting one another right now. Uh, I know it can be a very isolating time at the moment, and I hope you all have someone that's supporting you, someone that you can at least see for human contact. And we will get through this, guys. We will persevere, as we all do. The world will move forward uh, once we fight this battle. And um, it's a privilege that we as healthcare providers can be, can be on the front line of that battle. So study hard right now because that's the best thing you can do for your future patients.